everybody. I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week of December 21st to 28, 2019. What a week ahead. Huh? We have December solstice coming up and we have an annular eclipse at the fourth degree of Capricorn coming up. This is a week with magical energies that are really not connected to any space and time. This is a time that on the one hand, as Capricorn is deepening in the celestial sphere above, we are all asked to see things as they are, not as we would have wished them to be or afraid they might become. It is about a reality check and it is about understanding the laws that we all are subdued by our own personal laws the ones that are derived by the laws of the universe and the laws of men and are molded into our character as a one unified law called our experience and it takes time until we know and gain experience and it takes time until we have the courage and discipline to follow the lessons learned by our experience. And Saturn is all about that. Saturn doesn't care about what we want. Saturn cares about what there is and how we can structure it better and how we can make it more stable so it will be prolonged over time that it would withstand the torments of living in this reality the waves hitting against its banks Saturn wants everything to be rock solid and as this Saturnian time Capricornian time deepens in the sky we are personally asked to take up responsibility, to realign, to mature, both in an individual level and on a collective level. We can see different political and governmental bodies having either their day in the sun or their day in court at this time this is a time of a verdict and if you're found that you've been a good farmer to your land this is the time that the chickens would come home to roost so to speak but if your labor has been lacking this is the time that the shit would hit the fan for you <laughs> for all of us that we would be faced with the smelly odor of what we've created I don't know if you know where that uh, uh, um, saying originates from, the shit hit the fan. As much as I know, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, in the beginning, cinemas did not have air conditions in them. They had giant fans in the ceilings that were open to the night sky and ventilated the people sitting beneath them. Unfortunately, mischievous kids <laughs> climbing up of, on the roof after uh, collecting dog's poop all day long with no money for a ticket of their own, but still a lot of uh, mischievous spirits um, would throw, would empty those bags into the fans. And then people would be sitting downstairs saying, oh geez, the shit has hit the fan. Um, so that's that's the story that I know. <laughs> gruesome, I know, gruesome. But a lot of our saying originates from gruesome, uh, uh, um, you know, nucleuses. Anyway, let's see how this all sits with the week. Um, and I will be talking about this eclipse and its energies in a second. So, Sunday, the 22nd, is the day of December solstice. At least it is here in Israel and in Eastern Europe. 
it is a time that in the northern part of this globe we would have celebrated, we still celebrate, but I mean it's really from the dawn of our existence we have celebrated in the northern, in the northern hemisphere this day. Because this day is the day that the sun is reborn and light comes back into our life and life comes back onto the earth and warmth spreads again as the sun goes back north and rises high in the sky warming up the winter chill and creating spring in its loving uh, grasp there is no mistake that about 17 different saviors along the lineage of mankind Jesus being the last of them have been born and have died after and, and descended to heaven after three days on these dates these dates are special because that's the time that celestially astronomically the Sun stops moving in the south for three days it seems like it's because it stopped moving south which was its path all along winter it suddenly seems still or dead but after three days it reawakens and ascends to the heavens ascends north to the heavens and warms the earth again so you can see the analogy there and this has been a pagan and a weekend uh, festival for as long as we know in the southern in the southern hemisphere this is a time that we celebrate the first day of summer the returning of the f the full lit flame and we know that australia has been suffering from its worst heat wave to date and now we understand that it's just the first day of summer so my prayers are with all of you friends in the Pacific in the southern hemisphere of this world not a lot of us know that one of the many 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 conditions that allow life to go on stably on this earth ship that we're on is the fact that the southern hemisphere of this globe has more water than the northern hemisphere the northern hemisphere has more land and since there's a, a, a more proximity between the southern hemisphere of this world towards the Sun it gets much more heat than the north and if it was vice versa there was more land in the south and more water in the north the differences between seasons would be so extreme that life could not have been stably evolving on earth so in the coming years as this earth grows warmer people in Australia people in New Zealand people in the Southeast uh, Asia are going to have it harder than people in the northern hemisphere just an astronomical fact for us to think about so Sunday the 22nd is a great time to have a ceremony to thank the light for being in your life for rekindling this light for rekindling this flame for focusing and visualizing and where it is you want to mature to and what kind of responsibilities you want to take and what kind of realignment do you need in your life um, it is a time with a lot of imagination as well and with relationships and jobs they're not stable right now don't rock the boat too much. Uh, Venus is squaring Uranus. So just calm it down if, if you can. What can help you do that is the fact that Mars sextiles 
uh, Pluto over these days exactly on Sunday the 22nd and it helps us be more dynamic in our actions and think more thoroughly over them but don't be obsessive regarding your ideas and wants and cravings be flexible as much as you can Monday early morning watch out for aggressions Tuesday the 24th Sun trines Uranus go out of the box understand that you need to take yourself boldly where you've never taken yourself before try and chart out a course you haven't thought of innovate uh, good days for communication, especially the 25th and then the 26th. On the 25th, you already feel the energy is changing, you know. 26th is out of space and time. The things that can go on can feel irrelevant to the time that has lapsed or the, the space that I'm in. This is a time that we understand things, you know. This is a time that great changes can occur in our lives. And it can really affect you if you have something by the fourth degree of Capricorn opposing it or squaring it more than it does other people and this lunar and this uh, uh, annular eclipse is conjunct Jupiter and squaring Chiron conjunct Jupiter I mean it opens our horizons up it opens our horizons up we understand things we become wiser and maybe because of it we're able to realign and mature and take up responsibility but it squares Chiron buddy it squares Chiron we'll feel the pain we'll feel what we messed up with we we will feel the wound you know um, this is about addressing and dressing it not running away from it um, this eclipse would be visible it's exactly over Indonesia it would be visible over Southeast Asia and Australia and it begins in Saudi Arabia then it goes over India Sri Lanka the Indian Ocean and ends at the end of the Pacific but most of Australia and Asia are going to see it um, what else Friday and Saturday could be a little gloomy try and keep yourself occupied could be a bit of a feeling of an after um, how do you call it you know an anticlimax and even if you do feel that remain aligned Remain aligned and focused on what it is you want to bring forth in your life because these are magical days in which we can truly step out of our patterns and renew ourselves again. Many people come and tell me they feel stuck. But we have this force of renewal within us all the time and this is the time to give thanks for it for the fact that there is a cosmos that the fact that everything is revolving and ending and beginning and ending again that it is all the time changing and here the Sun comes again to warm the winter chill here the light is born again within us this process happens all the time if you feel stuck try not breathing every time I draw breath I renew and when it, you know I want to bring up Harrison Ford which is one of my favorite he's one of my favorite actors and there's a, an interview of him and he, he, he shares that after Star Wars went out everybody in the street told him hey Harrison use the force and he would have answered force yourselves and that's exactly what I have to say we are all little creators I know we feel like droplets, I know we are, but we make up the currents, we make up the waves, we are the ocean, and if these little creators are not going to straighten up their game, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. So, change yourself, change the world. Change yourself, change the world. And this is a time to really shine and be who you can be to let that light be born in your life and give thanks for it 
And in that optimistic note, I want to wish you all a wonderful, magical week and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for everybody celebrating. And may we all see each other um, happy and healthy and flourishing in the year 2020, which is definitely super transformative. May we live long and prosper. Heighten the light. Bye-bye. Thank you.